he a cute puppy? And he is still a puppy, so he's just learning. Have you ever thought about this? Sometimes it goes through the minds of people who say, oh, I just wish my team would do what I tell them to do when I tell them to do it. But it doesn't always work out that way, does it? So this brings me to mistake number three, thought number three, about... This brings me to the third of five big things that I've been thinking about for the last 12 to 18 months. Bringing on team members, one billion percent requires us to set them up for success in order for us to get what we need and want out of them for the business and to make the clients um, happy, to make sure that the value is added where it needs to be. So case in point, uh, almost 12 months ago, I brought on a closer. And one of the things I was trying to do with that was to free up certain elements of my schedule so that I would be able to work more on strategic relationships. The bigger things, right? If you're, if you're part of the EOS model, then you know that the visionary sits in the seat and really deals with the big relationships and the vision in the picture. And that's what I really wanted to focus on. And in order to do that, though, there are other pieces of my calendar that need to be other tasks, really, that need to go to other individuals. And so I brought somebody on and then wound up firing them three months later because I really hadn't set them up for success. Ultimately, we did not have in that place, in that one area of the business, I know I'm a COO and I should know better, but in that one area of the business, we did not have enough systems and processes to be able to let them go and really release them and expect them to do what we were hoping for them to do. That's on me. I didn't set them up for success. Now there is a little bit on them too, because they wound up not asking any questions. They wound up not being resourceful. They wound up making sure that uh, they were really punching a clock, if that, for part of the time and going and doing other things with the rest of their time, but not thinking it through in terms of, well, how do I really own this role? So there were two pieces, and that all comes down to vision and core values, rules of engagement. How do we make sure that everybody has the same level set expectations? And this is also why you have quarterly meetings with them. This is also why you have check-ins with the team, because no matter what, we are human first and things change for both the business, the owner, the founder, the CEO, the team, and the person. People come in and out of our business on a regular basis. We can't expect them to stay forever even though they're sometimes they're rock stars and, and we have to still wish them well. And I say that because I have another experience with a past client where people had left the team and they were devastated. Well, how could they do this to me? How could they do this to, to the business? Things change. Things change for one or more of the parties or stakeholders. It still comes down to vision and values and expectations. So that's my lesson here. And I'm gonna ask these questions for you in your business. Do you have a vision? Now, a lot of you will say yes. And if I asked other members of your team, would the vision be the same when I ask three members of your team? Would they all say the same thing for your vision? for the vision of the company, where it's going, where it's headed, why it exists, would they? Chances are they wouldn't actually. And that's one of the great pieces about making sure that you're doing annual and quarterly planning. Come back around, make sure that you deal with the fact that we are all human beings and in that 90 day world where we're stuck in the whirlwind, take the time, come back out. Why are we here? My big why for the team is all about driving economic success. I want to be able to provide team members with a way to make their life dreams possible from a financial perspective. And I'd I want them to be on the team because they have the same core values as 
the business does, and as I do, about driving value for our clients, about making sure that uh, we continue. Small, let's face it, small and medium-sized enterprises are the driving engine of the economy. If we're going to continue to drive the engine of the economy, then we need to be making good quality decisions. We need to be providing value. And we can't do that if people on our team aren't aligned. We also can't expect them to read minds though. And we have to be able to communicate this often, frequently, probably twice to three times as much as you're communicating it with your team right now. I communicate it with my team every month. Every month we have a call, it's an update call, and we paint the vision at that point. Where are we going? Where are we heading? Why are we doing this? And here's what's going on. Core values, rules of engagement. This is the other place where you really need to be doing constant check-ins. Is the team actually meeting the core values and expectations? But are you also communicating that as a leader of the team, what it is that's expected of them? If they don't know, then they're not going to be set up for success. If I don't tell the person in role X that I expect them to fully own that role and come to me and be resourceful, I want to hear all about the opportunities, I want you to own it, then I better say that. If I don't say that, then I'm opening myself up to not having set them or us up for success. And we are setting ourselves up for friction later on really super important. And when it comes to team and hiring, I know I've been on a spate of sales calls lately where I talk about this with the various people. How do you hire? Oh, well, did you have a job description? No, it's kind of from my gut. It's kind of from a recommendation from a friend. We need to be setting the team up better and the business up better. And how do we do that? we make sure that we have dotted the I's, crossed the T's. Yes, the boring stuff of a job description is actually pretty important because if people are going to be doing what you want them to do, you have to tell them. And the best way to tell them is in that job description. The best way to make sure that the core values and the behaviors align and who they are more as a natural being, not who they maybe show up as uh, for all the button down pieces of a job interview, you know, that's, that's about making sure you have a process that allows you to meet those goals. Do you have a process? Do you look at your team journey the same way that you look at your client journey? It's incredibly important. I saw this great video. Um, I was at a conference and this individual had, um, it was uh, Leila Harmozy. And she had a video up of, of two small, medium enterprises and corporate enter and, and corporate large multinational enterprises. And, and there were a bunch of arrows and in the small, medium ones, they, the arrows were all mismatched. And in the corporate one, the arrows all went the same direction. So just imagine you still got the right number of people on your team. And if you aligned everything and everyone was working in the same direction, it's not that you need a bigger team. It's that there's an awful lot less structure involved and check-ins involved in the smaller teams. And so we get these pieces where we're trying to go really fast, but we can't go that fast because we literally do not have people all rowing in the same direction. So lesson number three, making sure that you are setting your team up for success in 2023. Lesson number three for me was certainly about that check-in that I learned at the beginning of the year. Stay tuned. Lesson number four, coming up. Like this video if you found it helpful. And for more content just like this, subscribe to our channel or visit the Scaling Management Consultant Group website at scalinggrp.com or our new website at scalingresources.com.